Hello, today I'm going to talk about um, some Java implementation details uh, and also uh, some uh, essential parts of my approach to tic-tac-toe uh, based neural network game. Um, so as you can see, this game is currently deployed on Heroku server, so you, you feel free to play. Uh, it's nothing special apart from the fact that this is the... Uh, this is a game which which is using a, a dense neural network as a decision making uh, engine. Um, it's possible to win with this uh, player. However, it's quite smart. It's I would say it's decent. Uh, from uh, from what I can remember, it's able to win about uh, ninety six percent of game against a uh, random tic-tac-toe player. So the playing is very simple. Uh, you start a game, you, you, you have uh, some response. Uh, now you can see that uh, I lost. Uh, the thing is that I'm not highlighting the winning row so far. I think it's not, not necessary. It's quite obvious and it's quite simple game to understand where the game is and when the game is over. Uh, of course, you can uh, change the the way you play. Uh, you can uh, configure the computer to start to do a first move. Oh, now you can try to do your best to win. All right. Uh, so speaking about the tic-tac-toe game, and I think uh, which is very common for the most closed game, uh, in order to uh, make a very good engine, you need to prepare first high quality data. Um, in case of uh, chess games, for example, those best top engines like Alpha Zero wouldn't be that good if they were not trained uh, first with some um, high quality games coming from Grandmaster tournaments. Yeah. Um, so in case of Chess game, it's very, it's more difficult to provide ver very, very good data. Uh, you know, generating random games, it's not an option in that case. However, in case of tic tac toe, you you can you can generate the games by yourself, especially because uh, there are uh, many existing algorithms that allow you to um, to play like a perfect player, yeah. So, for example, this is the minimax algorithm which I heavily used in the in the stage of preparation of data preparation, uh, which will which which you will see in in a couple of minutes. Um, okay, let's switch to the code. Um, now I will I will try to discuss um, discuss some details. Okay, on the right pane, you, you see the um, game, game generator specification. Uh, this is just one handle, and it generates game into JSON file. Uh, I will show you uh, how this JSON file looks inside. Uh, but for now, let's try to uh, launch this, this simple... Uh, Spock specification, and you will see the output. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, we are generating games, um, and uh, on the left, you, you can see how many of games has been played, and also you can see. Um, you can see the information on uh, how many unique games have been stored in a, in, a, uh, in a map before storing them into the file. And also you can see the game execution uh, mapped into string where the blank fields are represented by dot and uh, other fields are represented by um, circle or, or, or X. Uh, yeah, and at the same time, this game execution path is the key which 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 I consider should be unique before storing this game. So I'm not storing duplicates in a file. Uh, 
So each of the of the key is represented in a file as a game, and also for each stage of the of the game, I am saving the next move that has been done. And also I am saving information about the winner, who won. I mean, uh, the X or O, or in case of draw, I store a null information for that case. So let's take a look at the, at, at the JSON file. Um, so here's the batch file containing the games. As you can see, there is a board state, information who won in this case x and there is a collection of subsequent states leading to to to, to game finish yeah uh, with the use of this information then i am able to um, program the machine learning the supervised learning um, um application i mean test which will be able to uh, fetch the data from that file, that JSON file, and try to um, try to learn, try to train the the neural network with some um, pre-designed uh, structure. Mm, but you know, when speaking about this generating games algorithm, uh, you can see you have some variants to choose. Uh, for this particular case, I was using two random players that were playing with each other and I assume the number of games to play is uh, 50,000, yeah? But uh, in reality, I didn't use this approach with random players. Uh, I did use for learning the games generated with the minimax algorithm, which is the algorithm that is not possible to win with, yeah? So, I was playing games with minimax against random and that this was my my baseline so with the use of those uh with the use of this file with that that kind of generated games I was able to uh to train my network very well so you can see how efficient it is um okay now let's switch to the Test code which generates the uh, actually which using those data to to train the network. Uh, here is the structure of the network. So I am using the twenty seven uh, input neurons uh, which are mapping the uh, board state. First nine neurons represent X. Next nine neurons represent uh, O's, and the last nine neurons represents uh, blank fields. Um, then we have a uh, three dense hidden layer with a hyperbolic tangent function as an activation. Um, each of them has decreasing number of neurons. First, we start from 36, uh, then we have 27, and then we have 18 neurons. Um, of course, I tested multiple uh, graph topologies, but uh, this one uh, was the most efficient uh, from the point of my performance test, which I show you later. Um, then I'm using the random algorithm to propagate weights between all those layers. Uh, and of course, then I am uh, prepared data sets from the file which I uh, generated with the generate games um, test earlier. Uh, now having this data sets, actually uh, I am able to hand over this collection to the mm, um, to, to my artificial neural network which will be then used to um, to, 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 to predict move for the, for the game. Um, this artificial neural network then will be wrapped inside the N tic-tac-toe agent which is the um, wrapper around, around artificial neural network. Uh, and this wrapper is inheriting, uh, is implementing the same interface, like for example, a random tic tac toe agent. Yeah. So it has common methods like uh, get next move and so on. Um, after the training session with each data set uh, finish, I'm using uh, chunk size for 100 gains for each, uh, uh, each chunk within one data set. 
uh, once the once the training is finished, then I am doing simple performance test. So I'm calling the evaluate agent performance method, which means that um, I am handing over the anti tac toe agent with freshly trained uh, artificial neural network to play against a random tic tac toe agent um, in the range of mm, uh, twenty thousand. Um, games. Um, if the performance of this uh, agent will be above eighty percent, which means that number of wins plus draws um, uh, divided by number of total games played, uh, um, expressed in, with the use of percent percentage, uh, will be over eighty. It's it's okay. However, from my experience, to make the the engine, um, you know, playable and uh, a bit difficult to to overcome, is um, uh, is is like nineteen uh, percent. Yeah. Um, okay. So now I will. St- of course, if, if this percentage value is uh, lower than eighteen, I'm not uh, serializing the artificial neural network to, to file, I'm just printing the, the performance was not enough. Uh, how looks the evaluate uh, agent performance? So this is very simple code where in, when in a while loop, I am doing uh, uh, moves um, by switching player every, every, every iteration. And I'm counting the, mm, um, the, the number of wins, draws, and total games, uh, which I'm using at the end to uh, calculate the performance. Okay, now let's start to to check what's the performance of the neural network trained with this game batch having over uh, 600 games uh, played between uh, min-max x player and random um, random player playing with O. Let's see the output. Okay, now I am starting the training, which is invoking in reality the backpropagation algorithm for the neural network. Okay, let's switch to the terminal, I think. Uh, yeah. I think something is missing here. Um, okay, here is the output. So as you can see, there is a, a bunch of reports coming from uh, my internal uh, Java-based framework for machine learning. It, it's just telling how far, how much uh, how much epochs has been needed to uh, to do a um, proper uh, weights uh, adjustments in in, uh, in terms of um, backpropagation algorithm? And also, it's uh, it's returning uh, game re- results at the end when we are testing whether our our file our our new, new neural network based player how good it is. Yeah, so if I scroll down, you can see it's still playing, 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 and playing. Sometimes it's, for the most time, it's winning, you can see. Sometimes it's draw, and sometimes uh, there is a lost information. Uh, so now you can scroll down. Okay, so as you can see now, the per- overall performance of this tic tac toe player is 90. 90 percent yeah so it's quite quite decent quite decent especially when it comes to the uh to the pleasure of playing with this uh with this engine so if i switch to the to the board this is this is very very close to this one so i will try to win with this player okay now i can't so let's try to do some tricky combination 
no. Let's try again. Mm. Oh, yeah. So this is the winning combination. So you can see it's possible to win. It's not that good as a min-max tic-tac-toe agent. However, uh, it was not the goal to prepare the perfect player for this, this exercise. Uh, feel free to play it if you have unthoughts regarding my code. Um, of course, you can pull this from Git repository, which I, which I, which I put in a comment uh, in the description of this movie. Okay, thank you for now.